Maybe, maybe you should go and do some contemplating. Hey, this is Rachel McElroy. Hey, this is Griffin McElroy. And this is Rose Buddies. Welcome to week two of the Max Fun Drive. Did you have fun last week? Did, did you um, did you get the secret password? If you put if you sorry if you listen to every Max Fun podcast and you take the first letter of the third word everybody said in those podcasts, then it spells the name of the Zodiac Killer. That's right. This whole time, did you get it right? Did you get the Zodiac Killer right? Rachel, did um, you get it right? The, the Zodiac Killer, did you guess him right? I mean, it's Ted Cruz, right? Mm, a lot of people <laughs> said Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz definitely helped, right? Like, he drove and he probably bought all the guns and stuff. It doesn't seem like enough letters if it's every Max Fun show. No, that's what I'm saying. It's he, it, Ted Cruz wasn't the name. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then if if it's enough letters... I think it's probably George Stephanopoulos. It was George Stephanopoulos. That's right. Okay. A lot of people watch The War Room and they just didn't get it. I watched the... Oh, I hit my printer. I watched The War Room and I was like, there's a Zodiac killer. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. He's super charming in that movie. And so you watch it and you're like, what a sweetheart. But you miss like all the Zodiac clues. You think he's too low to be the Zodiac this killer? This little guy? This little guy? Carville's buddy. He can't do a murder. He did several. Look at all that hair. Yeah. So anyway, (laughs) an unlikely duo, Ted and George. (laughs) What a weird weird way to start this episode. Well, we're padding for time. Oh, okay. No, that's not true. (laughs) Um, Welcome to the second week of our Max Fun Drive special. Thank you all so, so much. We had such a huge outpouring of support for the first week, and it was like really touching. This is our first year on the network for the Max Fun Drive, and so like we didn't really know what to expect, but the response, I think... I can speak for both of us when I say it's been humbling and wonderful, and thank you all so much. And even though we hit our initial goal, it is not too late to become a member. No, because now we're full-blown greedy, right? Like, we <laughs> we destroyed 10,000. What are we at right now? Let's check the current total, because I think we were nearing 13,000 last time I checked. Right now, we're sitting at 13,796. So, yeah, we're doing really well, but now we're yeah. hungry. We have more stretch goals for 20,000. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Travis is going to go to the Grand Canyon with Jesse and a few other folks and record a podcast there. Yeah. Um, which is buck wild. Um, so, should we, should we do something wild? Oh, babe, you can't just say something like that. <laughs> like what? What if we on air smooch? What if we change Henry's name to podcast? You like that better than on air smooching? Nobody cares. I'm pretty sure we've on air smooched at some point. No, we're always we're sitting when we record. We sit next to each other in a very small, intimate bench, and we're just always just necking. When you're not right now, Rachel's necking. Ooh, baby, (laughs) it tickles the necking (laughs) that you did on me just now. Ooh, boy, now heavy pets. (laughs) What? (laughs) Um. I don't know. Anyway, thank you all so much for supporting us. If you haven't, we're going to tell you all about the Max Fund Drive and why it's so important and why we hope that you will think about um, supporting us with your donations. But uh, for now, let's talk about The Bachelorette Season 1 starring Trista Rin? Rin? It's R-E-H-N. Rin. I think it's Ren. It's a, no, a little more forceful than that because that H is, it's not just Ren because that H is in there and that H wants you to know that it's there. So Ren. I think it's Ren. 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 Maybe uh, it's tr- French. It oh. might be. Rah. So here's the thing about um, we last year we watched the first season of The Bachelor um, starring. Did you oops. say last year? It was last year, wasn't it? I guess maybe. Yeah. You know, they yeah, mentioned dude, it. it's only March and Bachelor started January 3rd, I think. You're right. So, yeah. Technically last year. Uh, no. And <laughs> scientifically, <laughs> mathematically, categorically last year. Okay. Gr- gr- Gregorianally speaking, it okay. was last year. Okay. Um, we t- I can't remember the dude's name. Alex? Alex Michelle. Michelle, uh, who fell off the face of the earth after doing the first season of The Bachelor. It did not take off between him and his betrothed. Um, we, however, know a lot about Trista. Namely, like, the big thing that we know about Trista is that she marries Ryan. We yeah. knew the winner of this one. This is like How I Met Your Mother, except if, like, if the ending wasn't shitty. Like... <laughs> Um, like we knew who was going to win this season from the beginning, which yeah. has never happened with any season of the show we've ever watched. And we know because the Bachelor franchise props up Trista and the winner 
as kind of the grandmother and grandfather of the whole yeah the whole 15 years of shows they the this was the anniversary was today of 15 years of the bachelor so this season was uh they did season one with alex they did a second season of the bachelor with some aaron i think is what they said i don't know and then we didn't watch that don't know anything about it this third season uh like in the whole franchise is the bachelorette yes um which they treat with like a lot of novelty which we'll get to in a second but i don't know i thought it was i thought it was i really liked it i really liked watching like uh, seeing ryan step out of the limo and just knowing like this is that this is him and watching the other folks and knowing like it's not going to be you um because yeah, I think in the final stretch here, like it seems like Ryan is not going to win, and it's interesting, like knowing that that's not true. But yeah, these these this happened in uh, I want to say like January two thousand three, mm-hmm. um, and yeah, since then, like every time there's like a wedding, they show up like the king and queen of the bachelor yeah. bachelorette whole franchise. Um, and they did a, what was the thing that they did? Like a rededication ceremony? Yeah, they renewed their vows. Yeah, they did, they renewed their vows. I think that was on the special with, um, uh, it was one wedding special. It was one of the wedding specials. Yeah, they like piggybacked. Was it Jade and Tanner? Might have been Jade and Tanner, yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just like, we've known for a while now that Ryan was going to be the winner. And like, I don't, part of me kind of wants to do if we watch any other like classic seasons part of me wants to know who the winner is before uh-huh. we watch it because I, I don't know i found it very enlightening. yeah i've always avoided spoilers for seasons um but i i will say it was still enjoyable to watch even though i knew who was gonna win this was a great season again six yeah. episodes muy bueno mm. uh which is great because we had about two days to watch them yeah um and Trista was fucking fantastic. Yeah. Their, her, her relationship with Ryan was like all time great, like really, really good. Yeah. Um, and the dudes, I think in general were, it's interesting, right? Cause this is the first season of The Bachelorette. So like the dudes in general, they, they weren't too terrible in the way that they are terrible now. The way that they are terrible was this sort of like, and I guess this is fairly like, I don't know toxic fragile masculinity but it, like their shock at like wait wait she's dating other dudes and it's not just me yeah. what you mean she gets to make the decision she picks it the woman's in charge yeah there's a, there's a lot of that especially the first episode and most of those fools get cut away in the first couple couple episodes yeah um but like yeah not a bad like not a bad group of dudes they get a little boring i guess in the middle and towards the end um except for the finalists and trista's like all time like seriously very very good maybe my favorite american bachelorette um yeah she she seems very authentic there's never a point where it seems like uh, too theatrical. And she also, I mean, you get to see her with her hair down a lot, you know, like literally wearing pants at rose ceremonies. She wore pants at rose ceremony, which like, I I hope you, the listener, does not take that as a judgment (laughs) on me and Rachel that that stuck out to us, except that uh, I've watched a thousand episodes of this show now, and I've literally never seen it happen uh, on on The Bachelorette. Not only that, we get to see her in glasses, which I don't know that we've ever seen a Bachelorette in glasses before. Yeah, just like there's dates where like, Dudes come to her house and she's just like wearing glasses, a sweater and, and jeans, a sweater and jeans, just yeah. like yeah, what's up? Come have some margaritas with me. Um, she kept it very real. I mean, I'll, also a lot of that is like this was before the show got, um, uh, like overproduced, and it's yeah. definitely produced, right? Like, uh, I think you and I had a conversation while we were watching it. Like, oh man, they figured out how to make this show, um, now. Because when we watched season one, when we watched Alex's season of The Bachelor, it was like, this is a completely fucking different show where the things they had figured out was, isn't it novel for one person to date 25 other people? And that's fucking it. In this season, like, they had a lot more stuff ironed out. They had, like, a lot of their, like, tension flashpoints, like, started to, like experiment with and like yeah. I, I would be interested to know if any of those came from season two or if this was the season where like a lot of the language we used to talk about the bachelor and and bachelorette like came came into existence um i'm really happy that so many people too like i feel weird like we're like teachers in my during summer school who are like you have to read all of the grapes of wrath <laughs> by next week because there are so many people in the facebook group like i'm on episode five isn't this wild <laughs> i know um, so a lot of people participated. If you didn't, like, I actually think I can heartily, like, recommend this season. It's a fun, it's a fun, it's a fun watch, and it's only six episodes, and I had a good time watching yeah, it. Yeah, it's kind of, I imagine it's kind of like being a film student in a way, because I feel like 
we now appreciate the history of The Bachelorette because we can see the influences that made it what it is today. Yeah. So I, if you're a really a scholar of The Bachelorette, I'd recommend you watch this season. It's not just that. It's also like, in the end, you get to watch two genuinely likable people who are crazy about each other end up together. Yeah. That's good shit, and I haven't seen good. that in a bit. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get into talking about it. Let's be, I, I guess, kind of transparent about this. I took a, I took all the notes. It just happened that, like... Yeah, Griffin took the notes this time. Yeah. So, I, so I'm going to be the funny guy. Oh, yeah. Hey. Well, you're always the funny... Hey. Um, one thing we should point out is, like, we don't know if this is going to be one or two episodes of Rose Buddies, because we're going to cover the whole season, and I took actually a lot of notes, and yeah. if, if it seems like it's uh, beefy enough, we may stretch it out into two, because... Uh, to be honest, I don't know what we're doing next. Uh, we watched Are You the One Second Chances, and that's a nasty little show. I don't know if I'd feel good talking about that. They are doing that Prisoner's Dilemma uh, Bachelor Pad shit at the end of each episode, though. Uh-huh. Basically, they took uh, from there's been five seasons of Are You the One now, and they took uh, I think two couples from each of the seasons. Which the only like thing that stuck out to me in the first episode is that the people from the first four seasons gave the people from the fifth season so much shit because they spoiler alert, win. they lost. Yeah. Um, and then every episode ends with like they take one of the couples and they get them up and you can either share the money that you have banked or whatever, or you can try and steal it and that ends your run on the show, but you get all the money, et cetera, et cetera. That's dope, but the rest of the show just seems like fucking Geo's back on it, and that dude just sucks on ice, and I don't want to watch like yeah anything I, with well, him. You on know, it. starting next month, that Ellen DeGeneres first dates show. Yeah, that looks fun. And it does look fun. So we'll definitely... We'll definitely hit that up. Yeah. I think, well, we'll but be I don't close know that to the new season out, right? starting up soon. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've had a lot of folks. Survivor's back on. Pretty good season. Pretty good moves so far. A lot of folks have asked us to do RuPaul's Drag Race, which, like, we're not the... I I, I, I don't think we're the right people to do that show. And a lot of people have, like, talked about in the group their their reasons why. And, like, yep, that's it. Like, as a, as a straight white dude, like, I feel like I could not be more of the wrong person to, like, provide no, commentary on we have a niche, show. you know, and that's not our niche. It's not just that. It's just that, like, I would also have... My conversation points on, on, yeah. on RuPaul's Drag Race would be, like probably pretty bad and so like i i I, it's not it's it's just not their thing for for us to hey let's talk about the bachelorette but the thing that is my fucking wheelhouse is this trash show um episode one episode one bachelorette season one origins who is trista who even is trista i don't know i didn't take notes of that part How am I doing so far? <laughs> she is a uh, she's a uh, pediatric uh, like orthopedic physical therapist. Physical therapist. Um, when she was on Alex Michelle's season, she was a she, previous dancer for Miami Heat. Yeah, which I don't even think we did. We know during Alex's season that she was also doing because she had been no. doing this stuff for the the pediatrics for five. No, for years. some reason we didn't learn that. Didn't learn that her. during Alex's season. She was just a, dan- a former dancer for the Miami Heat. We didn't learn her current job, which is kind yeah. of busted now that I think about it. Yeah, uh, but this game is a surprise to me. I did not know that she was she was doing this. Um, I think she lives in California. She's from St. Louis. But she doesn't live there now. I know, but that is also where I am from. So That's where I would you're like from. to point out that What's up, she St. Louis? Is from there. Does St. Louis have a. Uh, I recently learned because I talked about in a Jumbotron, somebody had me talk about the Charm City, which is Baltimore. Yeah, I know we that. know that now. Yeah. I know that now. Um, and like Cincinnati is the Queen City, Windy City, Big Apple. Does St. Louis have a, like a thing? I don't think so. I mean, the thing that I told you about the arch, the gateway to the West, tends to be the phrase that St. Louis kind of hangs its hat on. Um, uh, St. Louis nicknames. Gateway to the West, the gateway city. Yeah. yeah. There you go. It's not as catchy. Queen City. Charm City's really fucking good. Does Austin have one? Probably Live not. music capital of the world. Yeah, I think that might be right. Um, so, yeah, that was boring what we just did there for a bit. I know. Um <laughs> Good notes, Griffin. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't take that many notes on Trista because at this point I just feel like I know Trista really well. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we should mention here also that we didn't cover the Mentel All. All. And there's yeah. also Ryan and Trista's wedding special is on this ABC app that we have on Apple TV. Yeah, I don't care. Okay, <laughs> brutal. Um, the wedding specials never really do it for me. Yeah. Um, so uh, the, for, the first thing I really took notes on was Chris Harrison's like speech introducing this season because it was so like... 
um, overplaying the novelty of this. For the first time ever, a woman is in control. Yeah, more or less. Uh, he says, 25 men will be here uh, on this journey, and week by week, egos will be shattered. Yeah, that ego emphasis kind of drove me crazy. It drove me crazy, but can I say, he was not incorrect. <laughs> because so much of this season was just like, What? You're dating other folks? Yeah. A lot of a lot of sensitivity. Uh, Chris Harrison looks approximately 14 years old uh, in this opening reel. Uh, uh, the first words out of his mouth are, Welcome to the Bachelorette. That's right. I said the Bachelorette. Like, okay, <laughs> dude, I've heard that word before. Um, and he talks about Trista's journey and says uh, about the dudes, You don't usually hear about men lining up to get married. Yeah. Oh, my God. That drove me crazy. It's not a good, yeah, it's not a good Up look. is down. <laughs> Shoes are worn on hands. Most time, when you think about men, they're just trying to get that nut off. But not here. <laughs> they want sensitivity and kissing, too, sometimes. Did we have to tie these men down to get them to stay here? Turns out, no. They're willingly pursuing marriage. Um... Which I think is funny just because there were a lot of soft boys this, like a lot of soft boys. <laughs> I don't know about a lot. There was a, a more than above the like average number of soft boys per season. I guess. SBPS. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, oh, I have a note here. She works in pediatric physical therapy. Crushed it with my notes. So it's step to me. I'm a good chronicler. <laughs> Maybe you should take over from here on out. Um, Trista shows up to the house, which is still not the mansion that they have settled no. into permanently for this franchise. So it's like weird to a see a lot of leather this. furniture, a lot of leather furniture. Uh, and uh, Chris Harrison walks her into the house and uh, almost gleefully shouts, Is this enough candles for you? Because there were approximately a bajillion candles uh, <laughs> all over the house. Um, which god, I feel bad for the production team who had to get that done. I know. Um, and, uh, in the, the same vein of like preposterously sexist comments that Chris Harrison drops at the beginning of this, he says, do you think you're ready to have the same battles that men fight? Uh, I think like that may just be bad no- note taking on my part, but referencing like the past couple seasons. Yeah. And- well, and here's the interesting thing that they kind of set up at the beginning and you can tell they're kind of figuring out like, what do we do with the bachelorette? They kind of set up like. Trista's going to be the one to propose at the end. Which, spoiler, doesn't, isn't how it happens. No, no, but they kind of are like, well, with The Bachelor, The Bachelor usually proposes, so I guess The Bachelorette will also propose. And Chris Harrison asks her, like, how do you feel about that? And she's like, I mean, I think it's okay. Yeah, I'm down. Yeah, it was just kind of like a, it was a moment where I was like, I wonder if they really thought that would that would happen which is a bummer because i went the whole season thinking like does trista propose because that's not how they do it in bachelorette today right in bachelorette no. today the bachelorette picks the winner and then the winner guy proposes or i mean or worst case which has happened a lot both men propose both men propose but yeah. usually um the bachelorette will say like no 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 don't don't dip don't yeah. do the dip yeah keep- put my hand upon my hip but do not dip 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 Keep both those knees where they are. Keep both those knees fucking locked, sir, and be prepared to walk right back into the limo that brought you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I went the whole season thinking, like, is Trista going to propose? Because, like, I'm fucking into it. It's just, I know, like... me too. A- another thing, like, this has never happened on this show before. But, no. Nope. And, and, and basically, it ends the same way that all the seasons of The Bachelorette yeah. ends with her picking the winner and then the winner proposing. But I... I, um, I honestly think it's just because they didn't know. Like, they didn't know how they were going to end this... No. This season, maybe like they didn't know how to handle the the proposal because, you know, they hadn't done it before. Anyway, uh, let's get to the dudes. Yeah, there's 25 dudes. I took notes on all of them. We got about four seconds of screen time with all of them. Some of them I'm really excited to read about um, because we took literally verbatim everything they yeah. said, which we were able to do because lit- maybe 15 seconds tops. Yeah, there were very few gimmicks. It was literally a lot of men just coming out saying, hi, I'm Brian. Nice to meet you. And that was it. That's it. Uh, we start out with Jamie. Uh, Jamie lets us all know that he turned down a pro basketball job in Germany to be here. Um, Jamie makes it fairly far and like every single one of his conversations is about this dope ass German basketball job that he didn't take, <laughs> yeah. uh, which like, sorry, man, but you, you make that, you make that decision for What yourself. do they call basketball in Germany? I don't know. 
I know baloncesto is Spanish for basketball. And I only know, I took a lot of Spanish and I'm not fluent at all, but I made sure like, I need to remember this word because it's maybe the most phonetically pleasing word in any language ever. Try it. Try it out. Baloncesto. Baloncesto. You put a little, a little, I put a little spin on yeah, it. Yeah, it's nice. Um, Rob, I have here written down that he's a tiny boy, and that's it. That is all I wrote. That's about how much time we had to get to know Rob. <laughs> Rob did have, um, I made sure to note um, in my mind that he had definitely a little sister wives, um, like goatee Ooh. action going. Not even a goatee. What's the word for it? It's not a soul patch. It's just like a little spot of hair right there at the bottom of the chin. No beard sort of connecting. I don't it. think just, there's just, a name for that. Just is sort there? of a pleasant island. See the one with the Rob Thomas hair? Yes. Okay. He has that Rob Thomas hair and sort of Keith Urban hair. Yeah. With, yeah. Kind of Keith Urban beard too. All right. Maybe we'll, maybe Keith Urban would have been more apt comparison. Um, uh, you you pointed out like at this point like neither of these dudes and pretty much none except maybe one of the dudes had like a gimmick or a prop or a, yeah like a special fancy intro and I don't know if it was because of lack of time they just uh, didn't know I don't think they knew to do because to, one guy there's one, one dude guy comes with a gift has a gift and they all resent him for it mm-hmm. because I think they all were like oh shoot that was a thing we could have done maybe fast forward to today when like somebody fucking like sets themselves on fire and jumps out of a helicopter landing <laughs> dead at their feet like remember me <laughs> witness me I'm Mike from Idaho <laughs> Damn, you remember Mike? I do remember Mike. I'll he jumped out of a helicopter inside. and died. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> uh, next up is Chris, who owns a car parts business and says that he thinks most people are jealous of him. That's it. Um, <laughs> Not to her, to us. Yes. Uh, Jack is one of the like five firefighters on this season, uh, and he d- does a lot of fire-based commentary and said but says that trista is the fire i'm going to get which i thought like you kill fires yeah professionally so i trista's the fire i'm going to get sounds almost menacing don't you think like if you were a if you were an exterminator and you're like rachel's the rat i'm gonna get well and he, it, the fire i'm gonna get sounds like an sti <laughs> like, like, that's the fire I'm going to get. Uh, Brian, I have here a sales engineer and also definitely a serial killer, which I don't know why I wrote that. <laughs> mean. Um, Aren't there a bunch of Brian's? There's so many. Fu- there's a murder of Brian's. Yeah. Um, Eric, I, this is all I have for Eric. I'm so sorry. Your notes are terrible already. My notes are terrible, but like, we seriously, back me up here, five to ten seconds per boy. Yeah, no, we didn't Eric, much. I need someone to captivate my attention. That's what I wrote for Eric. That was his quote, um, which, like, also is another vein that I, I kind of want to talk about of, like, there's a lot of dudes in this this big batch that just didn't fucking get it of just, like, I can't wait for Trista to try to win me over. No, dog. No. <laughs> wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. About how this is going to Yeah, go. there are a lot of men this season that are just kind of confused as to why they have to try. Um, Greg, who makes it pretty far, I think we know a little bit more about Greg. Uh, once He says he wants a really big family, uh, and his job is that he is an importer. Yeah, what does that mean, really? I mean, either, like, maybe an art, or... So we... Oh, we, spices? Spi- baby... <laughs> I have sugar from the West Indies. What yeah. are you talking? That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe like um, like coconuts. I've crossed the Adriatic with exotic tea and phyllo. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we do learn more about Greg. He lives in New York. Maybe cars because he has that motorcycle. He has that like old old motorcycle. So maybe. So why would that mean he imports cars? And motorcycles, motorized vehicles, things with wheels and motors. That you think that's the only way he could have gotten a motorcycle? <laughs> All right, <laughs> fair fair point. Um, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> uh, I have also a serial killer and a gym owner. <laughs> Griffin, these notes aren't especially informative, but they're delightful. <laughs> um, Ryan, a firefighter, also and the winner. That's a good note. <laughs> that's a good note. 
Yeah. You've never taken a note like that in any other season no, where you're like, this true. guy works in real estate and he wins the show. So, yeah, no, that's true. That's maybe the most informative it's been. Um, I wrote Brooke. Okay, I got a little bored here maybe because Brooke, I wrote a rodeo cowboy who needs to rein in his wild hair. Oh, Griffin. You can't like pre-pro jokes like that. Oh, that's not what note taking is. It's <laughs> good. But you know Brooke. I want to learn more about Brooke. I actually do remember Brooke. Yeah, yeah the rodeo thing plays a big, big role. Brooke's role-up. drama is fucking tasty. I actually am starting to think this is going to be two episodes just because I can go on and on about Brooke's whole scene. Brooke loves horses more than he loves Trista. That's, yes. That's his little, little teaser. And Peter, I'll be honest, and I'm not going to bullshit you. I just have three question marks down because we were focused so much on Brooke that he's like, hi, I'm Peter. Bye. <laughs> I know. We didn't even notice. I'm him. Peter. Should I leave now? <laughs> He just turns around and walks right back into the limo. I'm going to get some snacks and probably just head on out. You got the little cocktail weenies. <laughs> um, Brian H. I wrote, got that fucking Zachary Ty Brian luck. <laughs> okay. Brian H. goes home very fast also. Russ. Russ, we know. Russ he made it fairly around. far. Um, Russ saw Trist on TV and said, I'm going to date that girl someday. Gives her a gift. Chris... <laughs> He walks in and gives her a gift, and it's like a little blue <laughs> yeah. box that looks like a Tiffany box. A little Tiffany box, yeah. Uh, and she, like, takes it, and she's just kind of holding it, and Russ walks into the house. And as Russ is walking into the house, Chris Harrison walks up, and he's like, wow, gave you a gift already, huh? Wow, these, what a what a bunch of boys. Can I take that from you? <laughs> and Trista's like, yeah, I guess. <laughs> it was like they had no protocol in place. And I just picture the whole team standing off camera going, go out there, Chris. Go out there and get that box. What's she going to do with that box? She can't hold it the whole time. Grab the box. Grab the box the whole time? Um, it's, a nice, it's a nice bracelet. Yeah. It's a nice... T- was it Tiffany? Yeah. Tiffany or Tiffany's? Is it possessive? Is it, is it, are they all her bracelets? People say like a Tiffany bracelet or okay. a Tiffany watch. Um, Paul walks up and says, aloha. And she says, I guess you're from Hawaii. It's good. He is. So, like, circle gets the square. Paul had long hair. I remember that about Paul. Had Paul had long hair. Brian K. had the quote. Do you want to try to read it like Brian K. Or do you want me to? Uh... Why don't we both do it? Just at each other? And, and this will be... And, and, like, you know... T- I don't remember what it is exactly. I have it written down exactly. And you can read it off my computer. But, like, in 30 years, when we do our vow renewal ceremony... Instead, we'll just like play a clip oh, of this okay. of us reading this. Are we both going to say it at the same time? Should I go? No, over I'll to you? do. Uh, maybe I'll do it, and then you can do it. Is that going to be funny? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Because okay. I want to. I don't want to like be talking when you're saying it. I want to receive it fully okay. and completely. Okay, so I should sit quietly while you read the quote. If I had to describe Trista as a car, it'd be a grand touring convertible, one with a lot of power, very sleek. I could describe myself as the ultimate American sports car with tons of torque. Just a real American badass. I don't know that I need to read it, too. Ah, babe, all right. Uh, And he doesn't say that to her. He says that to the camera. He may as well have said it to her, though, because I don't think he made much of a splash. A lot of torque. That was the part that got me. A lot of torque. What does that mean for a man? Like, I can, like, apply a lot of, like, specific pressure in one direction on a thing. Like, thrust? I can thrust a lot. That's not, that's, that's not it. When I'm, when we're in the act of sweet love making, and I do call it that. I'm not, oh, you and me? Yeah. Okay. I'm not crass about it. I call it love making, because that's yes. what it is. There's a little yes. bit of, it's like, it's, it's like, um, you know, mama's kitchen. A little bit of love in everything. Okay. <laughs> I don't say, like, I'm applying torque. You know? It's not about, it's not all about, a lot of people are going to tell you, like, it's all about applying torque to the erogenous zones. And I say to that, no, 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 no. Just a real American badass. <laughs> she reminds me of a car that has a lot of power. Very sleek. Is that true of Trista, do you think? Yeah. I think she's powerful. Oh, yeah, I think she's very sleek. <laughs> and powerful. Like a grand touring convertible. What was this guy's name? Brian fucking, of course. <laughs> you knew that. You could have guessed that. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Um, you can't throw a stick without hitting two Bryans with the same stick. What a Bryan! Just so many Bryans. Only one with torque, though. Next up is Bob Bob Guinea, who is oh Bob, not the next Bachelor, but the Bachelor after next. Bob is another like franchise legend. Bob is kind of a silly boy, and he's the bat. He's the fourth Bachelor. Um, so there's somebody in between uh this season and his season. Uh, and apparently he. Has not been so lucky in love 
since being on the show in that like that he, did, he did not propose at the end of the show i think he was one of the first to not propose yeah um did alex propose he did didn't yeah he, he yeah. did um and then like they broke up and then he married somebody and then like did he have an affair? You you were telling me that he has some sort of like. Oh, I don't. I mean, I just I know that he has been married a few times. I think he is engaged again. Okay. Um, Good for you. Hey. But yeah, Good he's for he's kind of one of one of the the franchises like funny guy. Yeah. Um. Staples. Bob is. I I don't want to be uh uh again rude because this is not like a thing that like stuck out to me like whoa but um. I think it is worth noting he's kind of a stockier dude than like literally anybody I've ever seen. Yeah, on this he show. doesn't have the standard bachelor body type. Yeah, he's not like he's not like he's not uh, chiseled. He's not chiseled or wispy. He's just he's kind of a stocky dude. And he always makes jokes about it. He too. does. Yeah, he makes a couple off color jokes, but like most of his stuff is pretty like I don't know. It's pretty uh, a a fucking. It doesn't take much to be a comedy legend. <laughs> <laughs> on this show and and so like i get why he is yeah he's very position. self-deprecating i think he recognizes right away that he is not the typical contestant and he actually has like a pretty good good thing with with trista for yeah, a while he makes it pretty far because she she has a good time being around him billy i just have another firefighter there's a lot Dwayne. Dwayne says maybe the worst shit of anybody in this whole season because he says I've grown up in a family where the dad's always dad and mom's oh. always the mom. So it'll be weird having a girl call the shots, oh. but I'll go along with it. Oh, God, that, that, oh. There's a lot. I don't know that anybody says the word woman this entire season. And like, I know that we, um, as a species, haven't quite mastered that yet to say like, when you're talking about an adult ass woman that is, you don't call them a girl. Well, and I know this show was filmed a while ago, but it wasn't like 1947. It no, was like it was 2003. Two, 2003. I think at that point we were maybe used to women making decisions. <laughs> That's a fair point. Just a hunch. Uh, we have Greg. Greg has two Gs. Oh, two Gs, Greg. Two Gs, Greg. Uh, he comes out there and he's very earnest. He says, I don't have any ulterior motives. I just hope this is it. I was like, me too, Greg, but there is another Greg. And do you think that's why Jeff with one F only did one F? Oh, because Greg maybe. with two G's didn't do well this season. Uh, maybe. So next up is Brian C. And I just wrote here, I don't know how there can be this many Brian's. <laughs> I think maybe we started eating at this point because my notes for Jeff with two F's is five question marks. <laughs> didn't just do miss Jeff. Jeff actually sprinted out of the limo full speed, did not stop to talk, and just ran up the stairs and sprinted into the house, covering his face. It was wild. Um, Josh comes out and he says that I'm the nutty one uh, and that he needs someone who can keep the flow going. God, I don't remember anything about him. Yeah. You think I would remember that? Uh, Mike, I wrote, all these men are the same men. <laughs> Wayne... Is on some next level shit. You're going to read Wayne's thing. Because okay. I had to read the fucking hot torque car one. This okay. is a... this is. I made Rachel pause and play and pause and play until I got every delicious honey dipped word of Wayne's <laughs> monologue here. So this is what Wayne says to the camera. You could tell a lot about a person by the way they kiss. I hope Trista pulls me around the corner and decides she wants to kiss me the first night. A long, soft... You know, like French kiss. That's the type of kiss I like. <laughs> Griffin, what's your favorite kind of kiss? Man, let me think about it. Um, maybe like a long, soft, you know, like French kiss. That's the type of kiss I like. Took him a minute to pull French kiss a not little bit. Everybody, not everyone knows about this kind of kiss. Um, it's big where I come from. It's called... I saw this movie with Kevin Klein. <laughs> um, it may not be a French kiss, right? That's a lot, right? French kiss is a sometimes food. That's a lot. Well... If you came at me with that French kiss every time we smooched, I'd be oh, like, yeah. yikes. Like, uh, have a good day at work, Griffin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then the last boy is Charlie, who I just wrote the last boy, but we like Charlie makes it very, very far. Uh, Charlie is, I actually noticed a lot of folks in the group were team Charlie because he's, yeah. he's a, a, a handsome man, handsome, tall, strapping lad. He has, um, um, he has swoopy hair, swoopy hair and very charismatic. He's tall. Yes. Um, he apparently has pretty eyes, but uh, the technology didn't exist back then for us to really see his eyes no. clearly. <laughs> this was in 120 pixels. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, his, his, his like four blue squares that he had. I know. I could tell that he had eyes, but I couldn't see their prettiness. Um, let's take just a quick say the thing. Oh, Griffin, can I steal you away? I don't, 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 I think I want to change the tagline of our show from when you're ready to this one's for you, Richard. Karn. <laughs> you know what? I, I pointed this out to Griffin. This may not be especially funny, but Richard Karn now does commercials for a like construction company. Yeah. And at the bottom under his name, it says home improvement expert, which, which I, yes. I, I thought was a very liberal interpretation of that phrase. Well, you know, <laughs> Richard it's, Karn. It's like, well, he is an expert on the show Home Improvement. Yes, that, that would be fair to say. And you know, Richard Karn was one of those actors who like, they'll leave the set after the final day of shooting, after the, after the you martini You think he's like shot. helping the crew break down? He's helping the crew break down and like exchanging... AOL instant messenger screen names with all of them. Um, and then like he like buys props on eBay for the show that he was on, right? Like he's he's like folding up his flannels and they're like, you don't have to fold them up. And he's like, no, I like to. He's not just a star, like he's he's a he's a consumer of the product, right? Mm-hmm. And so like, yeah, I think he's probably a home improvement expert. Like I think he probably knows a lot about the show. <laughs> right now he hosts a celebrity golf tournament and i'll talk about this in every fucking podcast i'm on there's nothing anybody can do to stop me but he does host a celebrity po- uh, golf tournament where you can come and hang out with him and it's called the carnival and that's just good that's just good clean that's fun good. this one's for you richard Carn. fuck tim allen fuck tim allen i'll say it i don't give a shit fuck tim allen i'm all about richard Carn, and this musical stinger is an ode to him okay do you want to talk about why we're here I'm here to talk about fucking Richard Karn. Fuck the Max Fun Drive, too. I'm all about Richard Karn. Well, Griffin, you lost focus. Cancel your donations. All 13,000 donations. Cancel them. PayPal Richard Karn $10 no, a month Griffin, right stop. now. Stop now. I'm serious about this. I'm not serious about this. Hi, folks. <laughs> this is my serious voice. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's the second week of Max Fun Drive. You can support us and the network that we belong to, Maximum Fun, which has been um a we we've had the the McElroy family has had podcasts on the max fun network for going on seven years now um it's a really cool thing there's like over 30 podcasts on the network right now and all of them adhere to um i think it's safe to say like sort of a general tone of like positivity and inclusiveness and just yeah. generally like doing comedy without being a fucking shit heel about it yeah. um and i think that's really special we've cultivated um I, we, we've cultivated is like a I don't want to give us the active verb here. We have, by some miracle, um, we we have, like, the best community of any online thing fucking ever anywhere on the whole internet. And I think it's a really, really special thing. And we're really proud to have shows on the network. Um, they they uh, pay us money to, to do these podcasts on the network. And uh, we do ads, which we get a little bit of financial support from. But most of the support that we get for doing this podcast comes from you, the listener, during the Max Fun Drive. Um, so we ask you that if you like our stuff and you listen to us a lot and you feel like supporting us, go to maximumfund.org slash donate and give however much you're comfortable with, um, to, to help support this podcast because we use that money to, I just bought last week, I bought a new, uh, soundboard because mine sucks. Um, mine is very bad and, uh, we, we, we do invest some of the money back in the show. We use it to like cover travel expenses, uh, for stuff like we went to Portland to do a live in Bim Bam. Um, and it helps us kind of like treat this like a job, like a career and like do more stuff with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have uh, a bunch of different donation levels and can you talk can about some get gifts. Yeah. I'm trying to find the document that has all of them on there, but you know them at this point. Yeah. Don't you? Uh, so $5 a month gives you access to the bonus content. 
And as we mentioned last week, our very special bonus episode is a uh, exclusive conversation with the Bachelorette Canada, Jasmine Lorimer. It was so much fun. She is so great. We talk about um, Drew from her season of Bachelorette Canada, who is a total dick. And she was basically <laughs> confirmed everything we thought about Drew. She uh, gives her um, her hot take on uh, Rachel as the Bachelorette and, and kind of the differences between the American version and the Canadian version. That was my favorite part of the conversation was talking about like, how come yours is so much nicer than ours? I also kind of love when she um, talks about how much she likes our podcast. That but, was sweet. <laughs> but that's just me. Uh, so yeah, but I, that's just our show because it's our first year. We only have that one thing of bonus content. If you listen to any other podcast on the network, like you are going to find a treasure yeah. trove of stuff. There's a bunch, there's like seven or eight Mabim Bam episodes. Years upon years. There's an episode, I mentioned this last week, of me and Teresa McElroy and Sydney McElroy recording a My Sister in Law, My Sister in Law and Me. It's so good. Um, and there's like little videos and live shows, and, yeah. and all any podcast you listen to on the network has bonus content. Um, can you tell them what's up at 10? 10 bucks a month? $10 a month. Uh, that is where you get the enamel pins. That's right. Uh, they were designed by Megan Lynn Knott, and there's a design for each Max Fun show. For Rose Buddies, it's like a cute little rose bloom, and it says when you're ready under it Mm -hmm. on a little banner. Uh, and they're all really great. And I think now that we've hit the 10,000 mark, yeah. um, I think who, uh, anybody who donated at this level will also be able to purchase other pins and then the yeah. sales will go to, to charity. So yeah. So when you donate, you pick one pin, but then, uh, once the drive is either ending or has ended, you'll get access to the other pins. $20 a month. Tell me, what is it? The keep in touch kit. Okay, as I say, you I, made a face. Yeah, I, I'm I'm out now. I don't remember the uh, others. The Keep in Touch Kit has nine custom note cards plus envelopes, three encouraging designs designed by Brian Sunny D Fernandez, a four color rocket pen, a Getting There rocket stamp, and a rocket shaped candle. Oh, the candle. The candle. I do remember the candle made by uh, Erica, Erica Huff, Huff from Thank- her uh, company Wick Habit. Uh, we we use her candles like every day. They're really good. Uh, this candle smells like a freshly sharpened pencil, friendship, and a little bit of wax because it's a candle. Um, so th- those are, well, there's higher tiers that we'll get into later. Those are just, um, some of the lower tier ones. We don't ask you, like, give us all your, the money that you have. Just like, if you do have money that you're comfortable with, um, gi- giving to us to support the show and you like the show and you want to help yeah. us out and feel like a sense of ownership over this thing that you listen to, um, that's, that's the thing that means the most. Um, I think, yeah, I, if, some people talk a lot about how, like, you know, you pay what, like 10 bucks a month for like Hulu or Netflix yeah. or, you know, if you're getting that much entertainment out of the network, then it, it would be, it would be nice to, to think about giving that much. And to if, us. if all you can do is that $5 tier, like, I cannot stress this enough, a preposterous amount of bonus episodes, uh, yeah. just, just waiting for you there. Yeah. Um, so that's the end of our spiel here. We'll talk more about it at the end of the show. But again, the link is maximumfund.org slash donate. Um, just think about it. If you listen to the show and you spend a lot of time with us and you want to support us, there's a cool way for you to do so. Um, and also when you do donate, you get to pick whatever shows you listen to. There's like a little list and you check off whichever ones you listen to. And then your donation goes specifically to those shows. So you are directly di- supporting us directly if, if that's, that's where you want your money to go. Um, Next up is the first cocktail party. I don't remember anything. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I wrote shuddering with douche chills. I think this was me. Just because, like, at this point, there's 25 boys, and, like, a lot of them are this, like... There's a lot of just, like, uh, talking about, like, all the, the the cool money that they had. And, like, there's a lot of ego stroking, and there was a lot of, like... Uh, you know, subtle sexist comments being thrown around. The there room. was a lot of angst about the guy that gave... Uh, Trista the GIF. Yeah. Um, because all the guys were like, oh, well, if she picks him, it's probably just because of that gift. Uh, and I, and the other thing I noticed about this and all the following cocktail parties is that Trista, by the end of the night, is carrying around a coffee mug. And I'm like, Trista? Love it. You're on some next level shit because usually they just make you get drunk until you get like too sleepy to like not yeah, restrain she's yourself. Like, no, I want some she's like, coffee. Fuck that. Give me a cup of mud. Yeah. Um, I do have lots of notes, um, including she's drinking coffee. First up, Ryan gives her the first of his um, body of work of poetry. How does he already have a poem for her? Great question. 
He but just met her. Just met her. And he went to the bathroom. And she was like, he spent a long time in the bathroom. And he came out with a little haiku. It was not a haiku. It was a lot more than a haiku. Tris- Trista really appreciates Ryan's She's poetry. She's so into it. And that makes one of us. <laughs> Rachel went to school for poetry. So I was like... Anytime somebody does poetry on the show, because I don't, I don't have a fucking ear for it. Yes, of course you do. I really don't. But whenever there's poetry on the show, I turn you on. I'm like, is that good poetry? And almost, <laughs> has there ever been good poetry? Has there ever been somebody no, who like crushed it? Never. Okay. Never. What about the season Langston Hughes was on? <laughs> Name two more poets. Um. <laughs> wow. <laughs> no, I can do this. T.S. T. T. No. 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 No, no, no. Tiesto. E. E. Cummings. Okay, that's one, yeah. And Maya Angelou. I was thinking you were going to do a man. Oh, you, t- two male poets? No, just because we're talking about Trista and Ryan. and. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Um, another male poet. Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes. T- e. E. Cummings. Tiesto. <laughs> I was going to say T.S. Eliot, but he, Yeah, he's a poet. Is he? I thought yeah. he was just a writer. And not only is he a poet, he is also from St. Louis. Hey, what's up, T.S.? Like Hit me up. Tiesto. You thought I was going to say Tiesto? I don't know. I was just teasing you. <laughs> um, I mean, he is a poet if you think about it. He is a poet of drops. <laughs> uh, Brian K. comes up. Which one's Brian K.? Was he the one? Yeah, he was Torque. <laughs> <laughs> Torque is, says, he talks about breast implants. He's a plastic surgeon, oh, I guess. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he says a line, which was, uh, a little hands-on experience always helps. And I'm like, barf this man. Barf so hard that you push him out of the house with your barf, never to be oh, seen again. I just realized you didn't write down the occupations for a lot of these guys. No, because I had one second to <laughs> write this down. Literally all 25. I feel like they called him like breast implant doctor or something. Maybe something They like, like that. gave him a title that was like not a title anyone would ever use. I want to drive this home. I think it was between one commercial break. I think all 25 of these exits was literally like, hey, what's up? I'm Charlie, and uh, I'm really excited to get to meet you. And they walk in the house, and Charlie's just like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a great experience. Hi, I'm Todd. Like, uh, No no time for sparkle here. It's just in and out. Greg T., the importer, loves to sing. We do learn a little bit about his musical proclivities because yes, he makes it a lot, a lot further in the yes, show. Yes, we do, including a, a oh, rap. Please don't spoil the rap. A, a rap. He it composes. may not be until next episode. Which, by the way, looking at the clock, this is definitely going to be a two-parter. Folks, okay. strap in because we're still in episode one. Um, Jamie went to Sweden and played pro basketball. She's into Jamie. It seems like he makes it a few episodes in. He's the yeah. one who gave up his. Um, she's like really impressed that he gave up his basketball opportunity. His hoop dreams. <laughs> um, she's straight up like, I'm most sexually attracted to Charlie. Yeah. Handle it. And that line continues on through the whole. Yeah. Season. The whole season. It's, it's, it's he is, so... he is the blaze of this season. Yeah. It's so classic. Well, no, he's not the blaze because he, he, he reciprocates. Is into, he is into her. Yeah. yeah. But that's a reference to burning love, which we have struggled with. Burning Love is a parody, and they did three seasons of The Bachelor and Bachelorette, and I think it's some of the funniest, like, takes on this show, like, imaginable. How have we struggled with it? Well, we've struggled with w- doing an episode about it, because yeah. it's, like, already, like, how do you goof on a Yeah, comedy? it's funny. It was, how do you... It was really funny when they did this one thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, so, oh, Sweet Baby Rob came for her. Oh, came to the show for her. <laughs> I wrote Sweet Baby Rob came for her, which I thought, like, <laughs> when I said it out loud like that, I was just like, Trista, I need you. <laughs> Baby Rob came for her, like, came to be on the show because he thought that she might be the Bachelorette, I guess. So I guess they were already doing that season one. Um, and she's into him. Uh, and he had, uh, in addition to his whole look, he had a very high ear. What's the high earring on the ear called? Oh, oh. You said an industrial. I don't know well, if Well, because right. he had two holes at the top, which made me think. Oh. Typically, an industrial would be a it's bar a that went through the top it's of the ear. It's a better look than his beard zone. Than his, than his. Yeah, I mean, it's just cartilage piercing, I guess, is kind of what. Yeah. Uh, Russ, we find out Russ's gift, which she opens now, is a Tiffany bracelet. Um, Bob Guinea does some river dancing and everybody's very into it. Bob. Yeah. The other contestants love Bob. Anytime Bob does anything, they all look at each other and smile like, Oh, we're so glad Bob's here. Um, then fucking <laughs> like the kids in the sound of music, Chris Harrison descends the grand spi- <laughs> spiral staircase 
and clinks a champagne glass to summon Trista to the deliberation room. Yeah, there's a big staircase in this house, and for some reason they thought they would send Chris down it every time there needed to be a rose ceremony, and then make Trista walk all the way to the top. And Trista's like, sing him a song, Chris. And he's like, <laughs> so long, farewell, of we And then he, he scoots up the stairs on his butt. He's so cute. <laughs> he's a fucking scamp. <laughs> Another big suit. Still big suit. So many big suits, y'all. Uh, and then we get to the deliberation room, which is another like classic thing that has been phased yeah, out. Yeah, so there's photos of all the men, and she looks at the photos and makes her decisions. In later episodes, there are video messages that the boys record for her, but the, oh, there's not in this one. VHS tapes. There's a lot of VHS cassettes being passed between oh, hands. I love this, it. Which is... So, so we'll we'll get to the VHS tapes, like their core usage, because it was not for these videos. It was for her communique with the men and just like the most brilliant subversion of the date card imaginable. Yeah, because if you remember Alex Michelle's season, there was like a date box. It had like little clues, like a little puzzle you had to solve. But everybody would just go straight to the card. And so I thought, oh, they're never going to do that again. And they didn't. They but didn't. They do a video. They do a twist on it. Um, Rose Ceremony. We did fast forward through. That's I'm straight up with you right now because otherwise it would be like me saying like Gerald, Jeremy, but she cuts Davis. Like half she cut, of them, she right? cuts ten ten guys. Yeah, almost from, half. From twenty five to fifteen. Uh, we did get a few of the folks that went home. Peter, who was my question mark man. Yes, uh, Greg, uh, who doesn't have an ulterior motive. I hope this is it. It isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Too many G's, um, Greg. Dwayne. I've grown up in a family where the dad's always dad and mom's always the mom, so it'll be weird having a girl call the shots, but I'll go along with it. You'll go <laughs> now, along with it tonight. Now nobody is nobody. Now nobody's nobody to you. <laughs> uh, and, and and six others? <laughs> and the rest. <laughs> and the rest of them. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Eric said he... Oh, yeah, Eric was so salty. He said that... He was the he, one that was pissed about the bracelet. Yeah, he said he didn't stay because he didn't give her a gift. Yeah. Like, if, well, if I had given her a Tiffany bracelet, she would have told me to stay. Yeah, cool, wish somebody Eric. had given me that bracelet tip because I'd, I'd still be here. Eric was, I need someone to captivate my attention. <laughs> all right. Real cool. Um, that's it for episode one. I think let's do episode two, and that may be all we have time for here, folks, <laughs> on Rose Buddies. Uh, this is where we get the first video invitations on VHS. And, like, we had a full-blown, like, party when we saw this. Yeah, so, and, and this may not be how the... They did it the first time, but what happens is the men will open the door to their house and there will be a VHS tape on the front mat that they will pick up and put in the VCR. And they will all gather around a big, giant projection TV and watch the video message that Trista has prepared announcing the date. Do you think, and this is an important question, do you think they uh, watched other VHS like movies when they were all together? Like they put on like Hope Floats on VHS or... Something from the Black Diamond Disney collection or something like that. And one you of know, big, movies that men like. You know, movies that men like, like Hope Floats. Hey, mm-hmm. Hope Floats owns probably, I don't know, I've never seen it. Um, Lake House is more my jam. Like, when I think about, like, <laughs> when it's time to put a VHS on. For me, it's Lake House or nothing. Um, the first date is a trip to Vegas. Uh, and the people going on that date are Brian S. And that's the only name I got down. Four other guys go on the date, though. <laughs> we learn, we'll learn who went on the date as we dive deeper into yes. my excellent notes. Um, so they go to Vegas. They start out at a casino, and they play some games, and they do some dancing in a little private bar, which looks really uncomfortable. And this is when we get our first look at just how bad the production value of this show gets when they go on dates. And in, in this, the early seasons of the show. Um, because some of these, like... I don't, I, I don't want to be like nitpicky or whatever, but some of these shots, like in this tiny cramped bar, was just like, it looks like they were being lit by like from underneath with a single mag light or something like that. Like somebody brought like a wind up flashlight that they bought at Home Depot and like that's all that they used. I don't know. I, I just feel like it was weird. Whenever they're in the mansion, it looks like a high budget ABC yeah. reality show. And then when they go to remote locations, it's just like, it looks like somebody filmed it on their iPhone 1 or something. No, there's like no staging of um, any kind. The big story of this date is Russ, who her and Russ get a little tipsy. I think Russ probably more so. And it's just really, really um, forward. And this is never addressed, but we see this clip a lot of her like starting to walk away from Russ. And he grabs her wrist 
which seems to like piss her off a lot. But then, like, in the behind-the-scenes interview, it's just, like, there's a lot of just passion between me and Russ tonight, and it's, like, really popping off and just, like, I feel this really powerful connection. This is this is, this is is weird because Russ makes it pretty far, and every other interaction they have this entire season is bad. It's just, like, him being, like, kind of jealous and her being, like, not into it. And, but she's like, I want to give this a chance to see if there was anything there that first night that, like, we really connected. Because they do. They, like, kiss a whole lot on top of this private bar and do yeah. all this stuff. Well, and she, like, goes to a different location with him. Yeah, they go to a private hotel room and they, they smooch a whole lot. Um, and then the next day during the, the cocktail party, she's like, yeah, I was I was pretty fucked up. Um, and so, like, I... I that sort of influenced my decisions of why we hit it off so well. But then like the whole, he makes it really far and, and it's on this vein of just like, I just want to see if there's something there. Cause we really connected that first night and I don't know. It was grossed me out in a big way. Yeah. They both kind of keep referencing that night as if it was their, their brief shining moment. Uh, and it just never seems to come back and, and watching it as a viewer, you're like, I don't, I don't even see this. Like, I don't no, know it what seems it is. Bad. Like yeah. he grabs her wrist and she's like, stop. Yeah, she like pulls away from him. It seems like, oh, this is conflict, but it's not. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it's not great. Um, the other boys on the day get pretty frustrated with Russ because they don't get like any FaceTime at all. Uh, Brooke, the sad cowboy, um, didn't get any one on one time like at all, which he kind of laments. And I think this episode is his beautiful swan song. Um, but that was really it for the day. Um, the we see a clip of the boys the other boys who didn't go on this date having fun in the house uh by themselves with just a bunch of red solo cups um jack uh one of the firefighters gets uh really drunk and they carry him and his whole bed out into the front yard um yeah on on current seasons of the show this would be a big dramatic thing that they would use against him later but they they kind of tease like some of the guys are like i don't think that's behavior becoming of a bachelorette um contestant um but uh jack kind of outs it like uh, on the next day that he goes on like yeah i got too drunk and they carried me out in the yard and it's like not a thing at all um uh yeah i have written down here the dude's tattle on jack passing out and getting carried outside um so the next day is they are um is the la quinta pool party <laughs> <laughs> um oh yeah with rachel the sign. made me rewind it because it's the most it looks like y'all it just looks like a hotel outdoor pool like not just like a concrete just like a hotel outdoor pool. well and the sign do you remember the sign and the sign says trista's spa and pool party that looks like it got printed off a dot matrix printer designed in ms paint with like a bunch of clip art it is the most low budge date I've ever seen on this show. They come out and they all point out the sign. Like, oh, look, oh, look, at, look, this at, sign. look at how it's nice like, that there's a sign. <laughs> all right. Uh, Ryan is on this date. They have a nice, serious, long talk about um, marriage. And while they're having this like serious discussion, as they are walking around, they see not one, not two, but three different weddings taking place. And I'm like, where is this fucking La Quinta? <laughs> yeah. This destination maybe, La Quinta. Maybe we're in the minority, but I have never known anyone get married at a La, 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 La I almost said La Quinta, like some kind of like classless slob. Uh, I have never known anyone to get married at a La Quinta. I stayed in La Quinta and it's nice. It's fine. I haven't thought I'd love to have a party <laughs> here or a wedding, the most important party or the most <laughs> important of the party family. But all right. Uh, the boys back at home get a VHS cassette and it reveals the next date. Uh, she's wearing a jersey, uh, and all the NFL stuff is blurred out on the jersey and like all the dudes like just like lose it. Just like, what more could you want? A football and woman. Like that's not <laughs> even a sentence, bud. Yeah, she's like just wearing the jersey so you can see a lot of her legs and they're all like, she has the legs. She has legs and football liking. What? <laughs> She has football liking and leg not. And uh, she, she eats nachos and hot wings. I would like to watch the tape again, is what they like all to, say. That's all they did that day. <laughs> Take out Hope Floats. We're watching the football tape. 
<laughs> um, back at the pool date, the boys play rock, paper, scissors to decide who gets private time with Trista, which yeah, is a pretty great right. way of deciding this. Oh, th- this is where we should bring up. There are no roses on these dates. No. There are no group date roses. There are no, as they call them, intimate date roses. Mm. Nobody gets a rose before the rose ceremony, which changes the dynamic like drastically. Yeah, now it's all about that time. It's like, that's it. There's no no other prize to vie for. It's just like putting in the time so that you don't get sent home at the end of the episode, which I like a lot. Uh, Jamie, the basketball player, wins. Um, and again, he's just talking about his hoop, who's the German hoop dreams. He gave away. Uh, and then they rinse off in what Rachel called an elephant shower because it's, it was a very big shower with approximately 50 heads on it. Yeah, there were shower heads like every... It was like a vertical car wash. Every like five inches, there was another shower head. And you're seeing them like shower off together. And you're like, oh, how nice. And then like J- Trista's is just like, I think it feels really forced with Jamie. Damn. All right, Trista. Coming at it very real. I yeah. like that. Um well, that's what happens when you don't choose the person you get one-on-one time with. That's it's true. like it's decided by <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. Um, but she has a really good time on this date, and she says that she's rethinking her feelings from the previous date, and that she thinks things are like looking back feel really superficial with Russ. She's like, yeah. Um, she takes the third group date to a Chargers game. Uh, that's the San Diego football team I've written. They all here. ride in an RV together. And they ride in an RV, which Rachel was like, and we don't see the football game, of course, because they can't fucking film a second yeah. inside of a football stadium because it's covered in logos and all that, and also NFL stuff. Um, but the RV trip we see a lot of, and it seems really fucking fun. I want an RV date every season. I know. You know what it did kind of remind me of is Chris Soul's season where they only went to destinations in, in, America, in the United yeah. States. Um, Charlie talks about how he got shot by his dad while they were quail hunting, and they all have just a good hearty laugh about <laughs> that. Um, while they're driving, the tire blows out, which freaks everybody out. Um, but Jeff, uh, with two Fs, goes to fix it himself. Um and there's a really, really funny exchange where I think it was Ryan who got the punch. Sl- no, Ryan wasn't on no, this No, it day. wasn't Ryan. Um, where he like takes his shirt off and he goes to get under the car and he goes uh, under the under the RV and he walks back inside the RV and he's like, is the Jack in here? And somebody, maybe Bob Guinea, says, uh, we have vodka, we have tequila, but we're out of Jack. It's yeah. really quick, funny, just, you know, not the best joke, but... I liked there. There's a moment where he takes his shirt off and he's doing all this hard work, and all the other guys are kind of standing around. And one of the guys is like, "Well, I mean, should I take my shirt off too? Like, I can't do anything." But <laughs> uh, you can tell, like, this is a moment where he like really stands out as like a like a hero. Yeah. Um, they have some, I think they all hang out at night, uh, on like a beach or something. I didn't write the location, but I remember they oh, like, yeah, there's, there's like, like a bonfire. Destination. Um, and she has some time with Charlie, who she's very sexually attracted to, and she <laughs> tells him straight up, I'm going to give you a rose at the next rose ceremony. Um, which is a type of forwardness we don't usually get, but again, we usually get a lot of roses passed out during the, like, episode. Yeah, like, if there had been a group date rose, she would have Charlie. given it to Charlie. Um, Brian H. gets up there and completely whiffs. She asks why he should get a rose, and he's like, you know, I'm a straightforward guy, and, you know, you either like me or you don't, and it's like, oh, man. This is not how you spend your first <laughs> private time with the Bachelorette right now. Um, None of these guys are used to like competing this way. I don't think, and no. they and they like don't understand. Down to down to the 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 guy who wins this show, Ryan, is I am convinced the only person who didn't have this thought in his mind of like, wait, I have to compete. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Wait, there's other guys? Ryan is literally... Because there's conversations in the final three, final two, of just like, I just don't like that you're dating other people. Dude, you've been here the whole time. It's like they're all guys from uh, the movie Swingers. And they're like, oh, wait, no, typically I wait five days before I call the woman. Are are you saying that I have to sh- seem interested in her right away? Oh, man. Um, so we get to the cocktail party. We learn that seven dudes are going home this episode, getting us down to a tight eight. Um, Ryan talks to uh, her and, and tells the camera that the potential to uh, fall in love with her is definitely there. Uh, Trista has a conversation with Russ now 
and basically tells him like you need to not put on as much pressure she says there was alcohol last night and that affected her decisions but that he still like shouldn't push so hard um because she she doesn't doesn't, dig pushiness yeah she doesn't typically like guys that that come on that strong and that like are that aggressive and this is the next eight conversations that these two have until Russ goes home every conversation you have now heard the source material for every conversation like I just want to see if there's something happening that night but you need to calm the fuck down every single time every single time Um, yeah it's almost like she cares so little about the other guys that she's like well I did kiss this one so I guess I'll keep him around again and and Russ makes it really really far and their relationship is so like acrimonious at a certain point that it reminded me of who Shannon was Shannon and, from and Alex Michelle. Alex's season, who like they were final three, I think she finished in third yeah. place, and they were like they would be in the car together. She'd be like, "Don't fucking touch me!" <laughs> like final the third place finisher, just yeah. like I don't want to talk to you. I'm gonna play with my dog. Don't. <laughs> um. Uh. Okay. Then we get Brooke. We do get Brooke. We do get Brooke's oh, the whole thing. Rodeo man. Rodeo man gets really pissed off because she talks about how she's allergic to animals. Brooke takes this to mean that she's not going to give him a fair shake because he owns horses. <laughs> That's where his mind immediately goes. She's like, "I'm allergic to most animals, including horses." And he's like, "Well, then you're shallow." <laughs> he says, "If yeah. horses are going to keep you from picking me, you're shallow." That's a shallow answer. He literally says that to, to her, her fucking face. He says, I, uh, it's, um, how aggressive he is in basically telling her, don't pick me. Don't, don't pick, pick me, me if, uh, unless, like, if you would leave me because I own horses, that's really fucked up. And it's like, if I touch a horse, my throat will close up and I'll die. And he'll be like, so, that's so closed minded. You. <laughs> know. Like no, it's closed throated. But me. then later in his video testimonial, which they all do right before the ceremony, yeah, that's the next thing I have here. He's like, "Oh, just kidding. I'll get rid of all my horses. I'll do whatever you want." Ha ha. He says, "I'll sell all my horses and move to the city." And it's like, "Well, then you're not true cowboy, Brooke." Oh, Brooke also has some some like like serious country music star hair that yeah. we haven't talked about. Um, Russ. <laughs> In his video message, after all the drama that they go through, he records this video message where he says, I still have this rose from last week. I'll just pin it on myself. And it's like, that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> like he's cracked to the code. Like, how come no one's ever thought of this? Um, Jeff, with two Fs, officer, offers to give her the big blown out um, uh, RV tire, which I thought was fun. Yeah. Um, Ryan, in his video message. Hi, Ryan. Are you listening? There were a few of these messages where you were wearing the worst hat I've ever oh, seen on the a human Oh, the bucket being. hat. It was like a purple velvet bucket hat, and it really stunk super bad. <laughs> and I'm I, I'm sorry that, like, I'm sorry about the winding road that led you to that hat. I'm sorry that you had to walk <laughs> that road by yourself, because it's a lonely one. Um, And then uh, we get to the rose ceremony. Before anything, a Brian leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Too many Bryans. There's too many Bryans. And I think he just says, like, too many Bryans. I have to go. <laughs> Can't be this many Bryans in one room. Trista, we have a lot in common, and it's just a shame that my name is Brian. Uh, no, he just says, like, I'm not feeling it, and I don't want to take a rose from somebody who is feeling it. So I'm going to bounce. Oh, I forgot. I thought we were just doing a fun goof. No, O'Brien actually leaves. <laughs> um, and then as soon as he leaves, Chris Harrison walks out and says, oh, by the way, anybody's free to go at any time. Which they don't stress that here, like they stress it in Alex's season of The Bachelor. Yeah. Like he told the women, like, just because you're offered a rose doesn't mean you have to, like, accept it. Yeah. And maybe that's just because in the first two, in the first season, yeah, I don't Yeah, by now, it's established. It's established, like, yeah. Um, then, uh, Charlie gets the first rose. I say he's absolutely the blaze. Bob fucking, Bob gets up there. She gives him the rose. Says, will you accept this rose? And he says, absolutely. <laughs> and everybody's just fucking Everyone laughs. rolling. Everybody's rolling at absolutely. <laughs> they all look at each other like, we love Bob. Love that Bob. Uh, the people that go home are Jeff, who changed the tires, um, Jack, one of the firefighters, and I think the last person of uh, color in the house yeah. at this point. Um, uh, Brooke, the cowboy man who, like, yeah. their exchange as he left was pretty chilly. Yeah. Um, and, like, four other dudes. 
still didn't show the other dudes as as they left. Yeah. Um Yeah, and the, and again the guys don't seem to be leaving at like 9 a.m. the next day. No, they're, seems they're like moving things, at a nice clip. Seems like things move pretty fast. Yeah, there were not that many people of color in the house at all. Um like 3 I yeah, want to say I think like three it's of them. and and like out of 25 that's we're real excited about the next season. We are really hoping <laughs> for more diversity because, like, for a while, this was... And I think the show has gotten better than it was here about, like, having a somewhat more diverse cast because, like, three out of 25 is not... That's not good. We could do better than not that, Not exactly gang. representative of our great melting pot. Of our great American melting pot, yes. Um, let's call it there and just do the rest of the season in the next episode, right? Yeah, and we'll yeah we'll finish off the season next episode. Yeah, so if you've already done your homework, that's great. And if you didn't get a chance to finish it, now you do. That's great. Um, before we let you go, we do want to tell you one more time about the Max Fun Drive. Um, because it's important. It's an important thing for us because we've been able to, Rose Buddies exists, I feel like, because Max Fun Drive, or because, yeah. because of Maximum Fun, because we knew that it was going to be hard, hard work, kind of. <laughs> it was going to be work. Um, and that, like, we, we're going to have a baby, but, like, we knew that if we did this on Max Fun, we could be, you know, kind of supported and we can kind of turn it into a job and, mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know. Yeah. I've, um, I've cut back some of my hours at work so I can spend more time home with the baby. And, um, and it's been wonderful. I have too. Yeah. Basically, yeah. more or less. And it's, and it's something that we can do because of donations through Maximum Fun. Yeah. And it gives us time to do stuff like this. So yeah. we're really grateful. Um, so we ask for your donations, go to maximumfund.org slash donate, and you'll find out all the details there and you get to be a member of the network and you get to support us and take some ownership of, of this thing. And, um, we just ask like, if you spend a bunch of time with us and you, you have the means, just think about it. Here's some other, uh, levels I'll go through really quickly for $35 a month. You get uh, all the stuff listed below. Every time you move up a rank, you get everything below all the other stuff. For 35 bucks a month, you get a really nice pair of rocket engl engraved beer mugs. That's the Max Fun logo. is a, a pretty rocket. Um, for $100 a month, you get membership in the Inner Circle, which is our monthly culture club. A, a host of a Max Fun podcast will send out um, some digital thing. Maybe it's an album or a book or something. Um, for our first time up to bat this past February, you want to tell them what we did? Yeah, we did Al Jarreau's album Breaking Away, uh, Great, which classic. is wonderful. We have it on vinyl. We used to listen to it all the time when we would make dinner together. Back when we listened to <laughs> records. <laughs> and made dinner together. <laughs> before our home became a no-sound place. Uh, $200 a month, you get free registration for Max Con FunCon 2018, which is an absolute hoot nanny. You will have a great time there. But, of, like, of course, we don't expect everybody to donate $200 a month. That's that's quite a bit. Like, anything you're comfortable with giving, again, at $5 a month, you get all that bonus content. So um, if that's all you can do, like, that's awesome, and we appreciate you so, so, so much. Um, so yeah, just think about it. Just go do it. Just, it just, if you think you're going to do it, do it right now before you forget. Yeah. Because the drive ends, uh, at the end of this week at some point, I don't know yeah. the exact time. Um, so just go to maximumfund.org slash donate and just get it done. And I think that's it. And next week we'll be back with the rest of the season of Bachelorette season one. Anything else, babe? We forgot to go to the PO box. Sorry. There's probably a lot of stuff in there. We're really sorry. Like it's been... Y'all, it's been pretty buck wild here at McElroy Central for quite yeah. some time. Um, but we'll we'll make sure to go and we 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 appreciate everything you send. It's P.O. Box six 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 three nine Austin, Texas, seven eight seven six six, and we'll we'll make sure to go before we record again. Um anything else? That's it. That's it. We're gonna go hang out with our baby. Thanks for listening. I'm Griffin McElroy. I'm Rachel McElroy. When you're ready. Final rose. Stay with us on this journey of joy. She ends up with Soldier Boy. Maximumfun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.